you look at them, and this read the original you know, war and testimony and so forth, there, there appears to be at least a tension. And, and there have been some suggestions that it's more than that. Um, that's, and part of the problem, obviously, is the indefiniteness of any verbal description when you try to translate it to, to what people saw and recreate that. That's one of the reasons that one, one, one technique we've been trying to use is to get people to draw what they remember on the skull in the location of or the head wound, the wounds that, that they saw. We've also been following that up trying to, you know, for backup purposes, get, get a similar drawing on a flat profile of the skull, which we have both back and side. Did you have a good chance to examine the head wound that day, Doctor? Well, you know, we didn't do very much examination. We were treating and resuscitating a patient at the time. When you try to compare the Warren Commission report with others, let me ask you, I haven't read anything about this except one thing. With all the literature, all that's been written about it, I avoid it, mm -hmm. except what gets dropped on me. Except for the report of Dr. Latimer, who did the study. And I think it's he responded to an interview I had with American Medical News and uh, so wrote me about it and sent me a copy of so I was wrong and judging what part of the brain it was hanging out, <laughs> which is all right, which shows that I wasn't that careful about the examination of it. But I gather from that that the Warren Commission never had a chance to examine either the pictures or the x-rays or the body. Is that right? That's well, I understand. Well, I, why would we be... I don't know if they had a, a, a chance or not. Uh, the, the Chief Justice ordered the autopsy photos impounded until the year 2039. And uh, the uh, people who, who did the autopsy never even saw the photographs. Only a handful of people have seen them. I understand the Warren Commission made their report without seeing them also. And you can yep. see what a difficult position they would be in to try to describe mm -hmm. things when it was available. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have it. So if now you're trying to reconcile what the Warren Commission conjectured from talking to a lot of us in comparison to what Dr. Latimer and the three forensic pathologists saw when they examined all the evidence, but they couldn't be the same. Well, we're really not con not concerned with, with Latimer or the Warren Commission right now. Uh, well, you have to be. They're the only two official things that have come out on it. Well, we're concerned with your statement to the Warren Commission to the extent that that was probably your most immediate recollection along with your medical report. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, when I say we're not concerned with the Warren Commission, I'm talking about their overall conclusion. That that's really neither here nor there. We're, we're after a very sort of narrow issue. Everybody's making some big point, writing the articles, writing the books be different from what the Warren Commission wrote. Well, and well, I'd we're, say we're not the Warren Commission that. was really handicapped by being unable to know what they were writing about, except since, they had a body. Since they wrote the report, of course, those photographs were subsequently re-examined, most recently in connection with the House Committee investigation. And what one of the things that got us to ask this question was there were some reportedly exact tracings of one of those photographs published by the Commission. And that, that one in particular has raised the question because it appears to show the area of the back of the head intact in a way that, that conflicts dramatically with what the, the descriptions given by yourself and, and others at the time. And we're just trying to pin down whether there's a, you know, whether in fact that apparent conflict means something or not. And, and that's exactly what we're trying to do. We have a, a scale model of a, of a skull here. Would you be willing to draw on I'll that? I'll show it on your skull. Come on out here and I'll show you. No, I didn't see a skull without hair on it, so I wouldn't attempt to draw it on a skull without hair. If you ask me to draw on a skull, you come turn it on again. Yeah. Just to get some more wrong opinion. I didn't see a skull. I saw him with his brain hanging out. You both have a lot of hair. Lie down right up here. Okay, okay. Nils, why don't you work right. this? Was the head hanging out over the uh, the back? No, yeah. you're not about there. I'm on my back. You're right, Richard, okay? Right. So the things to see, you know, I followed the Mr. Kennedy into the emergency room. People bringing him in with secret service around him, blocking anybody else coming in, and it's time to decide. They didn't know what to do when they did very well in that morning. And I know what I thought as I followed the hill from here. He was bigger than you. 
are currently smaller because you see where I'll fit in and say it's the same Mm-hmm. I came in, Dr. Carrico, the surgeon, who was one of two people in the room, two, John Carrico and Dick Delaney, there in the room. And John was just putting an endotracheal tube in as I came, and I was right behind his stretcher, so he was ready. So mm-hmm. you brought the third one in the room then? Yeah, actually, the ones who brought the seeking mm-hmm. service were getting in, being led by two nurses. I don't know. There were two nurses in this two places. And so, yeah, to stay here, I want to show you how you can't tell. He had a shock of hair a lot more than yours. So much so that other people coming into the room to do things here, such as to do the trick out, and put his chest tube in that side of his chest, to start out of the and the feet, couldn't even see the top of his head. Where were you in the relation to the I was standing body? right here. At the head. Because this is where the anesthesiologist usually stands. He and I had my head against my belly against his head, holding in the trigger tube, breathing for him with a hand on a breathing bag here. And so that's right, if you would approach, this is the, <coughs> this is the entrance to the room right here. Start to toward the wall, and if you came in like this, you would not see the top of the head. Mm-hmm. You so were nobody on his left side. You, nobody except the autopsy people would tell you how big the wound was in the head. Did you at any time observe any wounds in the in the head at all? Oh, yeah. Well, where, where were but they? But so, I'm not going to tell you how big or that because that's not what I was looking at here. Because part of his brain is hanging out right here. Well, we're not asking the size. We're interested in the location. Was it the occipital area, occipital parietal, or towards the the front, or where was the wound? Right there, because his brain is hanging out right here on the edge of the table. You You're see? pointing to the parietal area above the ear there, on the right side. Okay. So he still had this hair, and the other people coming in were not even in a position to see it. He had a head wound. Was there any wound in the back of the head? You're the president I'm trying to suscitate. Am I going to raise your head and look at it? No, of course not. No, I'm, I'm just trying to give you, you an answer looked. to it. Right. That was not what I was there to do, and I didn't turn him over and roll him around. You know, I knew his wound was here. I knew his brain was hanging out here. I knew he still had hair up here, did he? I could see a wound, an open area in here, above the ear, prior to the whole size of the palm of my hand. Without the fingers? Yeah. I don't get up because I want to finish this <laughs> demonstration, Ben. You guys are trying to find out, and I want you to know what mm-hmm. the problems are. Is that all right? Sure. You did see you saw brain tissue. Yeah. Could There's you... some hanging out here by a thread, and I thought it was cerebellum. But I didn't examine it, though. I know it's cerebellum when I see it, when I read it, but this was, it was a uh, damaged brain. So you're not sure at this point whether it was cerebellum oh, or not? No, no, it wasn't. You, you know it wasn't? Yeah. But your impression at the time was that it was? Well, that was what I gave on an interview later to maybe cerebral and odd and that was the reason that I just wasn't thinking about didn't, didn't you say that as recently as last year, that uh, interview with American Medical News? No, Medicine? it was three years ago, wasn't it? Right. I thought it was 79. 79. 79. Yeah. Cerebellum was at the base of the head, isn't it? Yeah. So you're saying that that's, uh, you were mistaken in that? Yeah. Did well, I wasn't we have that then because it would come out of the third. It would come back here if it came out. And so. so I was standing here, and the others, as we knew, you instinctively knew you had to go through a resuscitated procedure. And I was breathing for him. One of them listened to his chest. We had no breast sound on that side. They put a chest tube in, through the tube between the ribs. During his time, they cut his clothes off of him. I don't recall how they got the towel, but I guess they just cut it off here with the knot still intact and cut his clothes off and all of these. So I just remember the things that I saw at the time while I was breathing for him, that he had this wound in his neck, which I knew when I came in because Dr. Carrico says he put this in the trachea tube in. He has a hole in his trachea. Blow the larynx and the tube may not be beyond it. So that was a real reason we did the tracheostomy was because the wound was so low. Oh, well. oh, that's okay. Pain. We don't care about the tracheotomy. We're interested. Oh, in well, listen. I don't. You get me irritated. You came to ask me things, and I want to tell you. If you don't want to hear them, right. we'll stop it. Well, go ahead. Well, I've okay. had so many people in. I'm sick of it. You understand? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. All right. Now, what do you want to hear? Well, I'm sorry we to be this way, but no. I get infringed on. Uh, we we were.
we're can primarily I, interested can I get up now? No, I want to finish. I want to be sure we get this settled. Mm -hmm. Why you're not going to get from anybody here but the size of this room like? Mm -hmm. We're not, but the location is, 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 is oh, important. No That's question right. about that. And there is a conflict about the location in a very fundamental way as to whether it was back here, really occipitally, or more up on the, parietally on the side. Oh, well, no. This was the just parietal area here. He still had as much hair as Mr. Bradley has, or had more. Mm -hmm. He's going to read it in the show. You're saying, though, that you never lifted up the head to examine the rear of the head. Uh, are you excluding the possibility of a rear head wound? Or are you saying that you just didn't look up, uh, you didn't have the chance to examine it? Oh, no, I'm excluding the possibility of it because with the cardiac compression they were doing, standing where I was, blood came out of this wound up here and went down my front and my shoe. Had it been ruined on the back of his head, it would have filled up the whole thing and just fell. Uh -huh. So you don't so, say there was a <coughs> wound on no. the mm -hmm. So it was coming out here because I could see it, but each time they compressed the chest. Some here. some of the people present have been quoted at various times of, of, of speaking of someone, and it's not been identified who lift, lifting up the head at some point. You didn't see Clark. that. Clark. Was it Clark? Oh, this is the end of it when they were doing a resuscitation and didn't know that he had the head in wound. And when a priest came to the door, I went over and asked him what's the proper time to declare a Catholic dead in order to administer the last rites. I turned over what I was doing to one of my other staff who was here. So then when he gave me his answer, I came back and said, uh, we might as well give up, we can't resuscitate. And that was when this on examination was done. But Clark did examine it then, but only to the extent of, I guess, so he he is rolling it over. But you weren't in a position where you could then uh, look at the same time that he was doing that? Well, I was, but I didn't know. You, know, that was, yeah. you didn't see anything further at that point that you... Uh, had seen before. No, I knew he had a hole, a bullet hole in the back of his neck. He did. And I'd found that, but I hadn't, you know, you asked me about looking for the head, and I had to answer correctly, and I didn't really look at the head, but in feeling it. Do you want to be a patient here? You get a complete picture of this, you need to have the patient down that I'm telling you about. Are you asking me to lie down? Yeah. I just you think I'll gain something for it? Well, I think so. Mr. Bradley didn't want to lie down, but I'll tell you about this. Why some of the reasons people were confused about it. Okay, in order to pull his head back to get better to do the tracheotomy, mm -hmm. this is a low wound in his neck. Mm -hmm. Well, I had to do that. I had to stabilize his head for that. And so I'm putting my hand back here. I have to put my finger on the floor. I see. So you were one of the few people here who was aware that there was a wound back there. Right? That was something that you told Latimer only recently, isn't it? Uh, no, I put it in my report. You did initially? That you felt a, a, a bullet wound back there? I did say the report the That's not the same report that was published with the Warren Commission? No, I didn't know. We did read that as it was published there, and there's no reference to it that I recall. Now, among the things I was doing, in addition to standing like this, which I thought was a bit of a ordinary man, she got a feel for poetry. We don't feel much anymore. That's my underscore for a while. But one of the disturbing features of the thing is people got thinking that this is a guy in New Orleans. He was a garrison. garrison. Um, I told you it was above his right ear, and he had that wound on him, so I wouldn't be able to really say here whether it came across these suture lines or not. I know what it was, because I read uh, Dr. Latimer's report, but I, I think I would be not honest if I said the way I'm sure where it was, so I'm just telling you what I, where I saw it. And we recognized, of course, with an area of skull, can as we see this often, there was a much bigger piece of bone blown out than here's a hole in the, in the scalp. And patients who have gunshot wounds in the scalp. Mm -hmm. All right, Doctor, I'd like to show you now a, a, a drawing that I think you've seen before. It's the photograph of the rear, a tracing of a photograph of the rear of the president's head taken at the autopsy. With the rear of the head, well, you said you didn't really actually see the back of his head, but is there anything in that photograph that would be um, inconsistent with what you saw? Mm, 
No, I haven't seen this before. I don't think you have a uh, No, but I suppose it's that bone fragment hanging to the side, and part of the brain is hanging out there by a string. That was what I had a little interest in talking to that lady on the reporter said the cerebellum. So if I said cerebellum, that's what I reported. No, I don't. I wouldn't be able to say whether that's right or wrong. I'd have accepted. I wouldn't be able to say that was Mr. Kennedy and Victor Helm or anybody else. Would there be anything oh, inconsistent with what you remember, assuming that was Kennedy? He said that he didn't see the back of the head. No, but, but uh, this picture here a little lower, I could tell you more, because uh, that's the drawing. That's not a yeah, it is a, it's a tracing film for photographs, of course. But because my impression is much more hair than that. Than, uh, That's not supposed to be the next one. No, I know I'd oh. say it. I would not be able to say I'd be saying the yeah. you, you probably have been have been interviewed uh, by several people over the over the years you indicate that you're kind of sick of all this. Do you recall being uh, talked to by a, a gentleman who uh, represented himself as Harry Livingston a little while ago? Yeah, I guess that's true. He's got my back no more about it. He was in just recently. Within a year. He says that he showed you this picture, and he quotes you as saying, "No, not like that, not like that." You know, I said I wouldn't look at the picture. He burst past my secretary and him here and on my desk, and I didn't look at it. No. He's quoting me wrong. I, has he published something on it? No, just a little little newsletter. Yeah. He's, a, he's a critic. Let me show you one other drawing here. Several doctors are on record as, as, as describing the wound in, in the posterior part of the head. You're saying it was much further uh, forward. Dr. McClellan, uh, among others, refers to it as uh, being in the, uh, uh, more in the occipital region of the head. Quoting from him to his testimony, I noted the right posterior portion of the skull had been extremely blasted goes on to give a detailed description. And uh, based on his description, an artist prepared this drawing for a book. I'd like to show that to you uh, and emphasize that McClellan himself did not prepare that, but an artist based on the description that Dr. McClellan gave to the Warren Commission prepared that drawing. Could you comment on that? Well, yeah, that wasn't it. That's about all I'd say about it. This is obviously a wound of exit here. No, that's not in the right place at all. Well, let me discuss this with you, but I'm not trying to, I would not attack the uh, integrity of any of my colleagues on this, but there was not much time spent in exam. Once he was declared dead, people left in a hurry. And the reason for the Secret Service was covering, searching. Ms. Kennedy was covering. I'd keep her out of the room. But as soon as he declared dead, Miss Kennedy and the priest came to the body of those people left. There was no examination of the body ever. If you look at the head, it was only that very momentary by all who were there during the resuscitative process. And I came back and said, uh, there's no chance of saving him. He had a head injury, which was not, to those right near it during it. Others on each side who had come around near the front, I had said he had the head and had moved away to show the extent of it. So maybe that's what I don't did see it. But uh, this was not the, what my idea was. Had it been here, he would have been lying on it. His head would have been flat on it, and I wouldn't have been able to see it. And we're just lying on the stretcher there, well, then with that shock of hair, and seeing this above the ear, and a string of brain hanging down by above the ear, I mean, stuff like that. So, um, is this drawing know, showing you now uh, another drawing prepared by someone who viewed the autopsy photograph? Is that drawing showing that wound more consistent with what you observed? Well, let me probably have to insist again. I couldn't observe anything like this because of the hair. And because I already know, and the knowledge I have otherwise would make me say this, that we see a lot of these patients have been shot through the head, and there's a very small scalp wound and a large amount of bone gone. You can uh, blast a lot of bone, and the exit side of the wound can come out through a small scalp there. 
And so I would have had no idea. I couldn't have said then, that day, or any other how big that wound was, how big the bony deformity was. Uh, that was the drawing prepared by Latimer, just for uh, your information. There's nothing inconsistent, uh, you, or what can you even say whether there's anything inconsistent say. about that? No, that wouldn't be inconsistent because here he, we would have him head would be on the stretcher at this point, and so that puts all the wound well above the stretcher, and that's what I can see with my head on the stretcher. In your report, uh, I believe you, you referred to an explosion. So the wound that you cited in the parietal area, you would characterize as an explosion, exit or entrance? Well, we usually should have read over what I said. What page is that on? Oh, this is, a, this is a citation from your uh, uh -huh. Warren Commission testimony. Before your report, well, I'm not think sure. Of it Exit wounds, we think of them as exploding when they come to the skull. Right. That's just the common expression that's used, you know, exploding as if it comes out. It usually goes in with a pretty small bored hole if it's high velocity, or low velocity and rolling, or then if the damage is going in, but usually a high pressure one would be seated. Make a small hole going in, a big hole blasted, exploded out of the other. That was your so if I use the term exploded, that's what I'm mm -hmm. Well, I think that's all I have. Well, it hasn't been very helpful, and I'm sorry. No, you've been well, you stated your opinion. No, you have been helpful. We appreciate you taking the time.